That's our newest system. Uh, and she's very efficient. Okay, so I'll start and we'll go around the, the room here to my right, uh, starting with Gina. My name is Jim Hawk. I'm the executive director of Neighbor to Neighbor. Um, I live uh, in historic Edgefield in East Nashville, which is District 6. Hi, I'm Gina Coleman. I'm um, community activist treasurer for Harris Park, District 1. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Fabian Bedne, and uh, I live in Sugar Valley, uh, which is technically Nashville, but some people call it Brainia. And uh, I work for the mayor's office. My title is Senior Manager Community Development. Hi, uh, Amani Kelly, Vice President of Historic Buena Vista, District 19. I'm Helen Hughes, and I am the president of the Bellshot Terrace Home Association, District 3. Hello, everyone. My name is Sheila Dorse, and I live in District 3, Skyline Village, and I'm the Neighborhood Watch, an activist for Skyline Village Subdivision. Good evening, everyone. I'm Phil Kibuchi, president of Historic Park District Community Association. I love this show. I'm Valerie Ocinellis, and I work here with Neighbors and Neighbor. And uh, you got me, so we're going to go around the room quick. I'm just going to call on some quick names here. Uh, Janet, would you start us out? I'm sorry. I'm Janet Parham, and I am on the management team of the North National Organization for Community Improvement, NNOCI for short, and I'm in District 21. Thanks, Janet. Yolanda. Hello, everyone. I'm Yolanda Hockett. I'm the president of the Haines Trinity Neighborhood Coalition, and I'm in District 2. Thanks, Yolanda. Erskine. Still muted. Still muted. <laughs> <laughs> Still muted. <laughs> didn't, want, didn't want you to hear. Didn't want you to hear me uh, chewing. That's what that was. <laughs> but anyway, I'm Erskine Lytle. I'm uh, chair of the uh, of College Hill Neighbors, and I'm in District 21. Thanks, Erskine. Welcome, Ruby. Hi, everyone. My name is Ruby Baker. I currently serve as the president of our Bordeaux Hills Residential Association and also uh, on the 911 ECD board for, for Nashville. Thanks, Ruby. Elise. Hey, everybody. My name is Elise Hudson. I'm from District 3. I live in Whites Creek. Thanks, Elise. Winnie. <clears throat> Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Winnie Forrester. I'm vice president of the Haynes Heights Neighborhood Association and we're in District 2. Thanks, Winnie. Uh, Joyce. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Now we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, hmm. can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, I am on the leadership council for Haynes Manor Neighborhood Association and also on the executive board of the Haynes Trinity Neighborhood Coalition. Thanks, And George. I am in district two. Uh, perfect, thank you. Uh, Keith. Yes, uh, I'm Keith Binion. I'm uh, from the Risha Heights neighborhood and also a member of the executive board of Haynes Trinity Neighborhood Coalition. Thanks, Keith. Uh, George. Hi, y'all. My name is George Ewing. I live in Whites Creek, and I'm the secretary of Friends of Whites Creek. I'm in District 3. Thanks, George. I, I think, did I miss anybody? All right. So um, I, I, about uh, two weeks ago, just uh, after I got back uh, in town, uh, the mayor's office gave us a call and said, we're doing participatory budgeting in districts 1, 2, 3, 19, and 21. Uh, and we're going to be spreading out over the, the, those areas to talk about what the participatory budgeting process is like. Um, and we would like to um, get to talk to neighborhood leaders about that. 
Uh, and so, of course, um, with our mission to equip residents and neighborhood organizations with the tools they need to succeed, we immediately sprang into action to reach out to you uh, to invite you to be here tonight um, with the hope that uh, potentially uh, you may host these uh, same meetings in your neighborhood as well. Uh, and so tonight you're getting a preview of what hopefully will get out to your neighbors. Um, I'm, I'm really glad that, uh, you know, we could have gotten anybody. There's so many people down in that mayor's office, uh, but we're very fortunate to have Bobby in with us tonight. And I'm just so thankful that he's here and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what this project is, uh, the process and how you can be involved in it. It's all yours. All right. Thank you so much. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. First, uh, I am very, very thankful of having the opportunity to talk to you all. Uh, participatory budgeting, it's a simple thing once you get it, but it takes a little bit to wrap your head around it because it's kind of intuitive. Like people really can't believe that we want you to make decisions about how to spend the money. And so people have all these questions all the time about, but Really, we, we get to make decisions about to spend. Yeah, you make decisions about how to spend the money. So uh, there is a process, and this process is done the same way all over the world. Participatory budgeting was invented uh, like 15 years ago in Brazil, and it's been used in thousands of cities around the world. In some places, they use it very extensively, like in New York City, for example. Uh, in other places, they just use it for some things, like uh, I read recently that one city is using participatory budgeting to decide how to spend the money from the federal government. So there are many different ways to use it, but at the core, it has some fundamental things, and that's what I want to walk you through tonight. Uh, Jim, I'm okay with anybody asking me questions at any time. It's up to you all to decide. Uh, the presentation tends to take 20 minutes, but I can make it shorter if you guys want me to. It's uh, <laughs> How much time do I have? Three hours, 24 <laughs> minutes. All right, that's very good. All right. Uh, but, uh, can we just say this? Um, if you are um, attending virtually, please, please, please um, unmute your mic and ask your questions. Um, we will try to monitor chat, but it's always difficult in these hybrid situations, especially when screen sharing is involved, and it is. So rather than raising your hand or sending a message in chat, please just unmute your mic and ask the way. All right. And I'll, I'll try to answer your questions the best, of, the best possible way. Uh, but I have been a, a fan of participatory budgeting for many years. Uh, I, I heard from my constituency in District 31 that they felt that they were not able to get involved in government decisions. And I thought that that's what most people wanted to do. And so when I learned about this process, I thought this might be a way for people to have more influence in how decisions are being made about spending money on, on things. So uh, I'm going to just run you through it. I'm sure that at, by the time I'm done, you'll feel that most of your questions are answered. The first thing is uh, why is it in Nashville, North Bordeaux? Well, we decided, the mayor's office decided to do a pilot program, and the mayor was uh, interested in, in adding even more investments in that part of the city. So this was a good opportunity to connect the dots and, and start a pilot growth program, and also uh, deliver more investments in this part of the city that traditionally has not been getting the amount of love it, it deserves. So, uh, oh. All right, uh, how do I go to the next? Oh, there we go. So what is what is participatory budgeting? Uh, in, in this case, participatory budgeting is uh, a way to spend the $2 million that have already been allocated uh, to uh, the city to be spent on this process. This was approved at the last capital spending plan process a couple of months ago. And there are $2 million that are already set aside. They're on the bank, quote unquote, and they are going to be spent uh, based on the decisions that the local residents make. Now, it's not that they can be spent on, on anything they want. Like if Jim Hogg tells me, I want you to build me a new back porch, it cannot be used for that. 
If Phil says, I want a new car, it couldn't be done that way. It can only be done on things that meet certain guidelines that come with capital spending plan. And those are the ones that you see on your screen. Uh, but we basically will ask residents within this region to uh, create ideas, to share ideas, right? Any idea is good, there is no bad idea. But then a group of uh, local leaders uh, that we will call budget delegates are going to go over those ideas and decide which one of those ideas should become the items that people will vote on. We won't tell them what they are. They will decide what they are. So the, the residents will propose ideas. The residents will screen those ideas for a number of items that can be put on the ballot. And then the residents will vote on the ballot and decide which one of the items that are on the ballot should get the funding. So uh, it's all done based on what the residents want to see happen. Um, I have a video and I hope that you guys can see it, but this is from New York. And it's, it, I show it because it shows those fundamentals that are the same anywhere. And those fundamentals uh, are, if it has a war participatory budget on it, it has to follow these rules. Participatory budgeting gives people real power over real money to make the decisions that affect their lives. First, people brainstorm ideas. They come together in neighborhood assemblies and think of what kinds of projects would they like to see in their neighborhood. Volunteers take people's initial ideas and turn them into real projects. And they bring them back to the public for a vote. The projects with the most votes get funded. They are then implemented over the next few years and the following year, the process starts again. So that's in a, on a nutshell uh, what PV is anywhere where it's applied. But in North Nashville and Bordeaux, it will have to be fine-tuned to make sense for that community. I live, like I said before, I live all the way in Brentley Arm. So I don't really know what makes sense for the people of North Nashville or the people of Bordeaux or the people of I don't know, Bellevue, as much as the locals we know. So for the participatory budget to make sense, there is a process where we put together a steering committee made out of local leaders, and they're going to take these set of rules, these bylaws for the process. They're going to refine them to make sure that it makes sense for that community. So that's the, the next, the first part of the process, right? Now, who can participate on this process? Well, because this is done by and for the people of, of Bordeaux and North Nashville, then only residents of that community can participate. So we have to have a way to verify that people that are getting involved are residents. So we have this website that we put together where people can enter their address and it will tell them if they are actually uh, within the region that was set up or not. So how did we set up the region? Well, we took the Bordeaux Chamber of Commerce uh, map and we took the North Nashville Opportunity Zone map, we put them together, and that's how we created this region. We didn't want it to decide what the region should be. We use established uh, maps to create this region. And this is the area where the mayor was interested in, in doing that additional investment. Uh, and I say additional because everything you see on the screen that looks like a blue line or a red dot, those are things that are already uh, funded through the capital spending plan. It may be streets or culverts or uh, a transit hub or, or school repairs. We uh, put a lot of these things on the school. I mean, the, the council approved it where there are many investments for that area already. Now the $2 million, like I said before, is in addition to that to uh, fund items that come from the community. So an important question is what makes a project eligible? Like I said before, buying a car for Phil is not an eligible project. Building a porch for Jim won't work. I know Jim, sorry. Uh, but it's, it's the way it is. Now, but there are other things that will also uh, make a project eligible or not. Like the, the steering committee may decide, and I'm making this up, that they don't like the color purple. So they may put a rule within their guidelines 
that nothing painted purple shall be uh, approved uh, with the, the money from the capitals, from the money from the participatory budgeting. So by, by them uh, uh, adding some layers of eligibility to the process, they're also making something that makes sense for that community. And so we will expect them to, through their conversations that they have, to come up with priorities that they see uh, that make sense for that community. Timeline. There is a timeline for the process. It takes a lot of time. It's, it's a slow and steady process. Uh, we are going to have four months of idea collection. And that is where we're going to go, like Jim was saying before, we want to go to your neighborhood association, to your church. We want to come uh, visit you at your home if you want to have us at your tea time and just talk to your neighbors and, and your friends and just say, okay, tell me what is important to you. Tell me your ideas. And we can start collecting all those ideas and just come up with as many ideas as possible. We have seen in other cities where they use this uh, method that ideas that nobody has ever thought about before, they become part of the, of the process and, and people are surprised that they never thought about it. But it's like when you engage with people and you encourage them to participate and to propose ideas, then you find those, those intersections, those things that, that you never thought about before. So that's why we give you so much time. We were four months, very uh, long amount of time to just go and, and talk to the community and listen to the community and collect those ideas. This, this, this thing is important that I explain, this is, it is meant to be done by the locals. I mean, I will be, I will be supporting this. The mayor's office will be supporting. The city will be supporting. But, but for this to make sense and to be transparent and to be believable, the local residents have to be the ones running the show. And so we are uh, going to ask, and you see it in, uh, an icon soon, a, a QR code where you can actually volunteer to be part of the process. We don't want this to be the mayor's office telling people what to do. We want the people to tell us what to do. And so for that to work, the locals have to be heavily involved in the whole process, including the idea collection thing. I mean, I, I have been to meetings where, uh, you know, the planning department whoever goes and asks for ideas and then they go away and people will go like, oh, they're going to change it. They're going to, they're not going to use those ideas, you know, but if, but if it's done by the locals, then there is this legitimacy to the process that we aspire to achieve. So like I said, first four months is idea collection. The next two months, two or three months is the proposal development. And at that period, the budget delegate, we are hoping to find 50, at least 50 community leaders or volunteers interested in helping that process of deciding which one of those ideas are eligible, which one of those ideas makes sense, and narrow it down to a number of items that to put on the ballot. Why do we narrow it down? This is the way participatory budgeting is done everywhere. You cannot vote when you have 500 items on the ballot. You need to have a manageable number of items. In most cities, they do like 15 items on the ballot. We think that because of the size of the region, it might be more like 24, 25. But that's another question for the steering committee to decide. They may decide to go with a smaller number, with a bigger number. And we are looking forward to see what is that they think it makes sense for that part of the city. Then after they are done, there will be a ballot uh, that is going to be voted on. And then uh, in December, if, if everything goes according to plan, there will be a, a voting uh, expo, like a science fair sort of, where people will come and be able to look and ask questions about the different items. And then uh, for, a, for an amount of time, again, decided by the steering committee, there will be a voting period and after that, we'll know which one of the items got more votes. And then we in the city will go and start building those things that people voted on with the $2 million that are set aside. So we don't have any interest in deciding how to spend this money. We just want to know what is important to the local people that are going to participate in the process. Uh, there are roles and responsibilities during the process. You have uh, the residents have an important responsibility, submit ideas, vote, choose projects for funding. The volunteers, budget delegates, mentor staff will work together. Uh, we will be supporting the budget delegates in the process of narrowing down from like a thousand ideas to 25 items to go on the ballot. 
we at the Metro staff already have put together a team of uh, representatives from the different departments. Why we do that? Okay, let's say Phil has a different idea. Instead of a, a car, he now wants to put a bench, you know, uh, close to a bus stop. So we need to work with uh, Wigo, for example. Say, Wigo, uh, how describe this bench in this location. We know that benches are, don't cost the same everywhere. In some places you have to put a, a special sidewalk, a special slab of concrete, whatever. So they will have to describe that item and then they will have to price it. They will have to use their budgeting capabilities and put a price to it. And so we wanna make sure that when you go to vote, uh, you know that that item that is $75,000 and it's not like, uh, a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. We want to know so you can make decisions about how you want to use your money. We also want to make sure that there is enough money to build it because it is paramount that at the end of this process, whatever people want to see built, we build. So if we end up under budgeting this thing, we're going to be in trouble. So we are going to use Metro staff uh, to to really price these things properly and make sure that they can be built. Uh, mm -hmm. That we at the mayor's office are sort of like uh, administrating the process. The Metro Council already did the important job of approving the money for the CSP, for the participatory budgeting. And below here, you see the steering committee, which is an important uh, role in this. They are like sort of like the board that is running the whole show. They are the ones that are going to set up the rules. They are the ones that are going to oversee the process. And because of that, we decided to ask uh, council members to recommend uh, people to be doing this. And we also added some people uh, as well, uh, people that we thought was important. Like we uh, decided that we wanted to have a high schooler because I forgot to mention this, but anybody 14 years old or older will be able to vote on this process. So we thought that if we're going to allow young people to vote, we should also allow young people to help set the rules. Uh, so. Anyway, so that's that's where we are. Bobby, I think you have a question. Yes. Um, as far as once, say, for instance, we come up with the budget and everything, who's going to be the one to adhere to the like have audit trails to make sure that the money is going where it's supposed to be and and it's not being you know mis. Managed. Yeah, the steering. Is there like a the steering committee would do that? Yeah, Is it steering, like a group of performance auditors or something? The, the steering committee will be overseeing the process, but we are also going to have a website that will track every item. So uh, you will be able to, with an interactive map that we are developing, you'll be able to follow with that particular item, let's say the bench that Phil wanted to build, mm -hmm. and and they, you will be able to see well why isn't this thing built yet, and you know. Pictures. So you'll be able to see the dollars and yeah. where it's going, money to the project. Mm -hmm. But okay. really, uh, I mean, I can, I think if I go back to the timeline, you see that there is a, the last one is evaluation and monitoring. And that's really what we want the steering committee to do. We want them to be on top of this uh, all the way until the process ends at the, in July the next year. Uh, because again, for transparency, it's important because we want at the end of this process, I want to do it again. And for this to happen again, we need to make sure that people believe that the process worked and that they made sure that the process worked. And so by them being involved, it helps keep an eye on this. That's a great question. Thank you so much. So that's going to be checks and balances so that. Well, I follow up on that. Because I think, too, this, this money is not going to be given to groups of people to go out and buy things. The city is going to be doing the work, so therefore the monitoring will actually be done by the city and the finance department. Yes, and sorry. We'll the same rigorous yeah. procedure. We have to follow the procurement okay. processes that okay. the city has. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. Okay. Thanks. I have a question. So if you submit your proposal, let's say we want to speed bank uh, on the things, and we will price that out all the time, we will do all that part, we will submit it to you. Right. Uh, 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 because you are Metro and you know what the price of speed bumps are. What, what would be required? I know what my neighborhood wants. They've been crying for speed bumps. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more question, too. What you got, you said the districts are 1, 2, 3, 19, and uh, 
I can't read the number. But uh, is there equal appropriations for each neighborhood? Do we all get the same amount of money? Okay. If my project costs more than Helen's project or Valerie's project, uh, would you have the feedback or that's not fair or they got more money than we did or? Yes. So you asked me two questions. The first question is, this, this is not done by community organizations. This is done by individuals that reside in that community. Mm -hmm. So if you have a member from your neighbor association, it's an individual that resides there, then the individual will propose the idea. Mm -hmm. And then the individual will campaign for that idea, and mm -hmm. you guys can campaign too. Mm -hmm. And then the voters individually will vote on those ideas. So whichever item gets more votes, uh, will likely be the one that wins and it will be funded. So we are, this is not something for nonprofits or churches or businesses, this is for residents. So I just wanted to clarify that, that part of this, it's the, the best thing for you to get that feedback is to make sure as many residents in your community oh, yeah. participate. I, I don't think we have a problem with that because I hear it all the time. Right, good deal. Uh, but what, what, what about the, the question regarding the appropriation of the different amounts of yes. different districts? So what I'm going to propose the steering committee is that they uh, create a system where at least like $300,000 have to be spent within each district. And then the, uh, the remaining 500000 can be spent anywhere. But it's really up to the steering committee to decide how do they want to allocate that, if that's one of the rules that they want to make. Uh, we are going to say this is a regional amount of money allocated for this region, and then uh, uh, you guys need to decide how to do it. But I'm, I'm hoping that they will agree that there should be a way for each district to, uh, to get a, a minimum amount of money to make it fair. Now, the, the word fair is not good because really, like most of this area, if I can go back, uh, is really district one. Then there is some district two and three and 21, a very little bit of district 19. So, I mean, if you really wanted to give it like a, the same amount of money to each district, how do you measure it? Do you use acreage? Do you use population? You know what I mean? Right. So we, I trust the voters, uh, the residents to participate and decide what's best for that community based on their own we are not going to tell them how to spend it. It'll be done by the local residents participating and voting and engaging. Uh, this is Joyce uh, from Haynes Manor. How you doing? Okay, so if each district is going to have an allocation, that means we are going to have to have some meetings in the district to decide uh, what projects we want because each district uh, may be composed of several different neighborhoods. Um, so um, how is that going to work? So we are not going, again, this is about residency. It's not about neighborhood associations or, or institutions. So I will go to as many groups as possible to listen to the ideas. So, and then uh, I will encourage as many residents in a particular neighborhood to vote, but we are not going to decide at the mayor's office where the money is being spent. This is going to be decided by the residents who that are 14 years old and older that are going to come out and vote. There is about 45,000 residents in this area according to the census. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many of them will actually show up to vote. I'm hoping that there will be maybe 10,000 people that come out and vote. So that means that the, that amount of people will actually be the ones making the decisions on which one of the items get more votes and gets funded. Yes, but for the people in the area to be aware of it, we are going to have to have a way to get the word out Absolutely. or have some type of meetings. Yeah, and that's why I'm here. And I'm hoping that you will invite us to come to meetings. Uh, the more people know about this, the more they participate, the more we hear from them. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to do this. Uh, if you will invite me, we'll go. Sorry, Bill's first. Yeah. 
just so to follow up really on Joyce's question, <clears throat> that, you know, to, to bring people together costs money, right? I mean, there's there's a cost to that. Has there been any, um, especially if we want to have a significant reach, right? Um, has there been any thought given to like having a dedicated budget to do any kind of marketing effort? Just get the word out to, to these to these neighbors who who in in my opinion have been largely disenfranchised by the system of voting, right? And, and access. Well what we wanna do is is I think there is neighborhood fatigue. I, I think there is meeting fatigue. So I I don't think that the way to go about it, and that's why we put four months. I don't think the way to do this is to create new meetings. It's for us to come and piggyback on existing meetings. And so anytime there is a meeting in that community, we want to be there and take five minutes of your time, explain the, well, 20 minutes maybe, and explain <laughs> the process, and then ask for ideas. And we are going to teach them how to submit those ideas. If they don't have an idea at that moment, we, I'll show you later in the presentation what we are going to do to collect those ideas. But the idea being, uh, I don't want to create a whole new set of meetings, which I know everybody started to go to new meetings. I just want to go, if you're going to have a neighborhood meeting in your church or in your community, or or, or I even talk to planning. If you're going to have a planning meeting, I want to come and, and just uh, I share some of these flyers and explain to people what the process is. Uh, so I don't think regarding budget, we don't want to buy this thing. We want to actually Quite the opposite. We want the neighborhood, the community, to be self-sufficient and do this, and we want to support it. If we start paying to people to do things, then we are buying into this process. Oh, no, no, I don't want to pay. Oh, no, I understand. <laughs> that, but, but we. That's a different story. The, the way it is done uh, all over the place is yes. that it's it's, a, it's something that is being done by the community, and then the the, the city supports it, mm -hmm. but tries to. To not to insert itself into the process in a way that can delegitimize. Did I say that word right? Mm -hmm. yes. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, Mr. There's more that you can okay. probably share down the line. If you guys will let me finish the presentation, okay. I'm okay. sure I'll, I'll answer the questions. Well, well, let's let's go ahead and finish. Let me just, just, just real quick. This almost sounds like it's driven by council members, right? So if, we, if there's five different districts, right? Then, it's, it's not driven by the council members. Well, I don't, I don't mean driven. I, that's the wrong word. It's because if we're trying to, as a neighborhood association, trying to get everyone together, it seems like it would be a lot easier if it came from the communication came from the council member. So it's one, oh, one meeting mm -hmm. with each each district, and then they bring in the, yeah. the neighborhoods. Well, I'm, I assume that the council members have regular meetings. So not necessarily. My, not necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if, uh, well, we if there is no meetings, we'll actually reluctantly set up a meeting. I don't want to really. Uh, I I remember how it was. I mean, about the neighborhood. I mean, the, the meeting fatigue, and I don't want to sure. add to that. But I, my I think there is going to be plenty of meetings, and and if we don't see enough meetings in some part of the city, that's where we'll fill the gap and, and set up our meetings. Okay. You know, one of the things that I think about with this is uh, it, it's great if a council member wants to have a meeting, but the re as you all know, because you're you're presidents of these organizations, the vice presidents, if the if, if that happens, there's always people who attend your meetings who don't go to that meeting, and then they're like, okay, what happened in that meeting? So by having the meeting, so by a, a, a going to as many meetings as possible you're actually doing two things. One is getting the word out to more people and then also reinforcing the word. Because this isn't, while, while it sounds like it's an easy concept, some of the stuff isn't easy in it. Uh, and so the more times it's heard, the better it is for folks. Yeah. So if you allow me, I mean, I promise I won't run away when I'm done. So, uh, uh, I have this car keys. <laughs> so there are many, many different ways for the residents to participate. Uh, the, the ones when you participate in the steering committee or as a budget delegate, uh, that has to be a local resident because we don't want outsiders to come and influence the process. 
But if it's a committee facilitator or somebody is helping on logistics, setting up a meeting or whatever, that we're welcoming people from other parts of the city that want to learn about the process and want to participate. But the decision making, it has to be local. So when we expand this in the future to other parts of the city, we'll ask the local residents also to be the one leading the process. Now, why, why is that participatory budgeting separate steering committee from budget delegates? It is to make sure that there is no, uh, somebody sneaking a project that they like. So by having a group of people making the rules and another people executing the rules, you're creating some checks and balances that keeps anybody from trying to put, a, from Jim to get the back porch in his house. No, I'm going to have to be the porch, right? <laughs> That's the Saturday morning. <laughs> so, uh, so obviously participation is important. We created this uh, uh, form uh, and this is a QR code that you can scan using your camera. And then I uh, hope some of you that live in the area will want to sign up to participate. I'll show the same QR code at the end. Uh, but we really want to start building that group of people that are going to lead and carry this process forward. Uh, because like I said before, that's what makes it legitimate. They are not there to do what I want. They are there to do what they want. I, I just want to emphasize that it's it's important. Uh, after the steering committee uh, finishes uh, with the rule book, with the bylaws for the process, we're going to ask the council to endorse it. And then we start the fun part, the idea collection that I was talking about before. Here are pictures of the idea collection we did for the transportation plan. And on the left there is a picture of the board of chamber of commerce basically uh, we'll go to any meeting that will have us uh, and then do what I'm doing here today, just explaining the process and hoping uh, uh, to get some questions from you. The project proposal development comes after the idea collection. That's when uh, we'll put together the, the, the five sheets on each project. And this is an example. I copied the, something from the Capital Improvement, Improvements Budget, the CIV. And it shows uh, what district is it in, a description of the project, where is it located, and a budget. Again, this is very important. We want to have a description on a budget uh, uh, so people know what they're voting on. Then the voting is another fun thing. Like I said before, it happens. Uh, people have an opportunity to vote and to elect, uh, choose which items will get funded. We're going to use Hub Nashville. Uh, it's, it's a system that we already have in the city to, for people to communicate. I'm sure you all know this, this system. We're going to ask people to register to vote using Have Nashville. Why? Well, because a 14 year old couldn't register otherwise. Uh, and so we want to have something that we know that we can use for people to register. But we're also going to use Have Nashville for people to submit ideas and also to vote. So that's going to be the, the system that we're going to use the backbone to, that we're going to use for this process. Uh, again, the details on this will be up to the steering committee to decide, but this is what we're offering uh, as a way to do it. Uh, everything will be on a website. We're going to have a website where there will be an interactive map. This is from the city of Cambridge in Massachusetts. Uh, they also do participatory budgeting. Uh, we're going to have this website that will have all this information about uh, how the system works, information about all the steering committee members, a link to uh, a place to find out if you are within the area, a, a link to how to register to vote. Uh, everything will be in that place and that's how people will know uh, the, the status of different projects. At the end, the Metro Council may have to do some legislation. For example, if somebody decides that they wanna buy a piece of land to build a playground, uh, like a pocket park then that requires council legislation. But, but there's no necessary council legislation for everything because like I said, this has already been approved that the funding is already there waiting to be spent. I took these pictures. The one on the right is uh, what you usually think when you think about infrastructure, right? Like big, flashy, fancy stuff. The one on the left is the type of things that you can do with PV. Smaller, 50 to couple hundred thousand dollar projects that uh, you go like, why didn't they ever do this, right? Why didn't they put this crosswalk or, or this bike lane or, or this 
bus shelter, or it could be a community garden or, or a speed bump, like she was saying. So as people propose these ideas, then I expect this, the best ideas to bubble up and to be voted in and, and for us to go and spend them. Now, I can tell you this, I was talking, uh, when we put this thing together, I was talking to Public Works, and they were like itching, right? And they go like, wait a minute, if we can actually fix something with, with, with the money we have now, can we do it or we have to wait? So no, if there is something that people tell you that you can fix now, fix it. Uh, so that's that's fine. So the, the Metro employees are excited to find out other things that may have not run about before. Uh, and so this is, uh, this is uh, I'm trying to say is that uh, we want to use this opportunity also to learn more about what is important to the, the residents in this part of the city. Lastly, uh, here is a QR code again. Uh, I hope you guys will scan it and, and sign up to volunteer. You can also email uh, us at pv at nashville.gov and that's a, a, the email account for the PV process. And so that's it. And now if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to yeah, I can have them. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I know when it comes to where this money goes to, does it strictly have to be something that's infrastructure or yeah. can it be something that, like, say, for instance, a lot of these areas that you mentioned, there's food deserts, community gardens, things that can help the yeah. overall. That's a great question. In some cities, they use operating budget money uh, and they use capital spending money. Mm -hmm. in, in Nashville, we only use capital spending plan uh, money. And so that's money that can only be used on items, uh, permanent items, infrastructure items that are $50,000 or more. Now, this is the first year we're doing this, a pilot program. Mm -hmm. And it could be the next year we add operating budget money that could be used to, like in Vallejo, California, for example, they use the money also for grants and to support nonprofits and support. I was thinking of libraries, like yeah. all the schools. It's such disparity in school yeah. books. Well, you could, you could use this money if the residents wanted to do it that way, to buy new lockers on a school or to build some uh, infrastructure in the school that is within the price range. Uh, but it couldn't be used to hire people uh, or it couldn't be used to do something that is temporary. It has to be a permanent investment. And that's, by definition, what capital spending plan money lets you do. What? Mr. Bednick, this is Yolanda. How can I have a question? Uh, Yolanda, we had a question started here by Helen, and then we'll get to you in just a second. Uh, yes, sir. What are the timelines for the beginning to the end of the project? <clears throat> the process uh, takes a year. Uh, it started, uh, I already started working on this for a while to set up everything, but it officially starts uh, next week. Uh, and it will go on for a year until uh, July next year, where it will hopefully start all over again. So this year we're spending $2 million. I mean, you are spending $2 million of the capital spending plan. At the end of the process, uh, when after voting, but if voting happens like we hope in December, then from January to June, it will be the construction of all these items and the monitoring of all these items. And at the end of that, uh, if if it's funded again, then we'll start the 2022 participatory budgeting process, and at that time it starts all over again. Y'all gonna have some jealous people if y'all don't get with the other districts. <laughs> well, I, I wanna do this all over the city, but you mm -hmm. have to start with a, studying this in one place, Absolutely. and it just happened. This is a pilot program for this. Yvonne, thanks for waiting. What's your question? Yes, on the website, would there be a list? of I guess approved items that um that you could possibly um ask for and then also a list of letting us know like what you know what's not approved or what we can't um you know what the money can't be spent on uh yes uh sort of we are going to ask you to just give us any ideas you have uh without worrying about if it's eligible or not and then the budget delegates will screen that to eligible items. And that's because- I guess just, 
Yeah, I it guess was, I'm just asking for like some yeah guidelines. Um, yeah, there will be guidelines, and those guidelines, like I said, will be decided by the steering committee. Uh, but for example, there will be guidelines that have to do with federal, state, and city law. Like you know, you cannot build a porch in the back of Jean's house, and that's a that's a, a law that, that doesn't allow us to do that. But there will be other things that will be decided by the steering committee. So we, we'll, when they are done at the end of July, hopefully. They will put all that information on the website. Yes, the website will have any information at all information we have about this process. Bill's got a question for you. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I'm excited about this. I think, I mean, I'm very excited about this. I think this is, this is really. Feel I'm excited. Very excited. Um, and thank you for, for all the work that you're putting into this. Um, first, first question. Uh, the executive, you said that the executive committee or the steering committee is going to ultimately decide how that money is spread across uh, all five of these districts to, to some extent, right? Because it's going to be a discussion. Yes. Okay. Um, and in terms of it being on acreage or population or, or what have you, that has not been determined. That's no. just purely, okay, cool. By, by the legislation through this, there's $2 million for that region that you see on the map. Um, second question uh, is around um, the. It's kind of a dual a dual question because we have a lot of money that's being dedicated from our budget to this new Department of Transportation and, and just traffic calming in general. Is there um, knowing that that's going to probably be a very big topic for North Nashville in general? Um, how is when we see the projects that are already going to be decided on, how can we align, how, how will we know what projects are being done or sort of in the pipeline, even down to the speed humps on Arthur, stop sign on you know Monroe Street, so that we're not spending the money? Yes. So you, if I understand your question already, you want to know if the Department of Transportation will have a list of items they are planning on doing. And that is already on the transportation plan. If you go to the back of it, there is a list of all the items that okay. are hoping to be funded through this process. Uh, some, and I know that because I was also part of that. So yeah. it's a big book, but there is a part in the back that describes all the items. Now that's evolving. And so yeah. it will depend on things that, that we learn as, as the plan is implemented, but there is, there, it's likely that it will be very close to what is already listed there. Okay. And one final question. Yeah. I love that Hub Nashville is going to be the mm -hmm. platform for voting, um, but I'm also acutely aware of access. Mm -hmm. And yes. not everyone has access to a computer, not everyone has access yes. to a smartphone. Will 311 also play a role in saying if someone wants to make a phone call to vote, will that also be an opportunity? So we are going to also propose a steering committee to have volunteers with laptops available to go to all these meetings and help with the digital divide. That was a concern that we have. The beauty of uh, Have Nashville is that can be used on the phone as well. It's an app that people can use to interact. And I think most people have it, but there is also people that are, they don't have access to, to internet or computers. As a matter of fact, one of the steering committee members is a uh, lady that doesn't have any uh, internet experience and, and she's relying on her daughter to do it. So uh, we try to find young people, elderly people, people from different backgrounds to be part of this decision making because we wanted it to uh, speak for the whole community. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what they decide. I mean, maybe they'll decide that they want us to go with some kind of a paper ballot or, or uh, to have uh, you know, mailboxes, voting boxes within the community where people can vote, or a phone number and then people can call and stuff. I don't know. I'll be curious to see what they propose. I mean, we we are going to uh, try to accommodate what they propose. Okay. One quick more thing. One more quick thing. The steering committee has that already been determined, and has that been announced? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then Gina? Um, thank you. Uh, as I've enjoyed the community to work over the last 16 years, 
um, going door to door, just best to get the um, to get the feedback that you need. But all of this is expensive. In order to do the printing or to get the flyer out to tell the neighbors about it or however you do it, social media, a lot of this is depending on the, it's totally with residents driven is what I'm getting the first, the feedback from you is that it's totally resident driven. So we are really going door, to, well, I would do, I'm going to go door to door and knock on door and tell people about it. Like, Hey, yo, 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 desire, yo, uh, your wish has come true. We are going to get some sidewalks and we got the mayor is going to invest in us and uh, we <laughs> we're going to give it out. But we we are going to go door to door. We're going to get the word out to people because they've been saying this. This is what they want. So we need you to come to the meeting. So. You said this is totally resident driven, right? Yes. So it's depending on the neighbor. It's to depending, respond. yeah. It's depending on the steering committee members, on the budget delegate members. And you know, I'll be there all along. I mean, you know, I like to engage and participate, but I have to be careful not to overdo it because I don't want people to think that. I'm trying to push any particular agenda. Well, and I can see that from your, your position. But what I'm saying is that from, from my position as a community <clears throat> activist, when people are saying, well, we need sidewalk, they're going too fast, they're gonna, so a kid's gonna get hit, we gotta get the, we gotta get some sidewalk. So when I go door to door, I don't wanna get their hopes up and it don't come through. I understand. The money is already there. Because if, if, if I tell it and I put it out there and I got a big mouth. If they uh, vote for it and if they get enough people to vote for it, I mean, it will be the ones with more votes and it likely get funded. The money is there waiting to be spent. It's not that we're going to go like, oh, well, we changed our mind. We we'll take the money away. The money is there. It's been approved. It's set aside for this. And now it's up to the residents, the, anybody 14 years old and older, to actually go and vote for this, whatever items that they want. And if there is a particular item that you are interested in, then you want to make sure that people propose that item in the idea collection period. And you said the minimum amount to spend is 50, 50, 000. 000. Yes, 50, 50, oh. 50, 000. Tina, I, I, I think I just want to say something too and say, I, I don't think that you can tell your residents that it's guaranteed no, that they're going to get that, that yeah. right? Because like I said, yeah. get their hopes up. You don't want to get their hopes yeah. up on that. Yeah. I've got a question. Yeah. This is this is Janet. Um, my question being, um, everybody in our area who lives in our area can vote. That includes renters as well as persons who actually own the, their uh, property, correct? Residents. Homeowners, tenants, homeless, uh, anybody that resides within the community. Okay, uh, then my, that's okay. That's that's the answer to part A. Part B is what about stakeholders, people who actually own the property? They don't live in this area, but no. they own the property. Uh, no. Do they get a vote? No, they don't. It's only residents. They do not. Okay. Okay. They do not. Okay. Parents, Thanks. Not business owners. Don't get no business owners. Property. Is residents. Okay. Right. Okay. So you gonna determine. That's the way participatory budgeting work. It's about the residents. It's not about interest groups or or you know nonprofits. It's, it's about the people that live in that area. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Just can I ask you a question about the, the budget delegates? Yeah. I, I think when I saw your presentation um, it showed you know the steering committee is going to be appointed how the budget delegates get elected or selected anybody that wants to be a budget delegate they just need to complete that form and then uh, I'll I'll be the one reviewing it and uh, I think if they are interested in participating they're very likely to be part of it See, we had to, in other cities that they do this regularly, 
People also submit an application to be part of the steering committee early on, but we had no history here. So people didn't know that they could apply. They couldn't, they didn't know what this was about. So we, we didn't have the time to do it that way with the steering committee. So we had to actually ask the people that knew the community, which are the council members. And then I, we also asked people in the office like Kathy Bags and Eric Brown to make recommendations of people that live within the community that uh, can be part of the steering committee. Uh, in, in, in the cycle, the next cycle, we'll probably open it up for other people that wanna be on the steering committee to apply to be part of it. At this point, we have time, we have for like four months to get the budget delegates. So I think there's plenty of time for people to do it uh, as they get excited and interested about this for them to apply using that form. We just didn't have the time to do it with the Steering committee. Fabio, I've got a question. Kirsten, you're next. Let me, get Helen, ask your question. Okay. You're next. That's fine. That's How fine. How are the districts collected to be a part of this? Uh, it wasn't about the districts, it was about the region. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor wanted to uh, start in that part of the city, and we needed a map, so we took the Bordeaux Chamber of Commerce map and the or a North Nashville Opportunity Zone map, and we put it together, and that's how we came up with the region. So did you all um, uh, have um, communication with the diff different council people for that district? We did, after the fact, uh -huh. uh, but we were in a hurry to put a map together because it had to be part of the capital spending plan legislation. Mm -hmm. And so we actually made a decision to use uh, to create mm -hmm. that map based on what the mayor had suggested. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe I believe that some of the council members uh, will uh, probably want to see a different map and that's something that can be adjusted at the next cycle. This is what we put together for this pilot first uh, process. But as we move to the next one, I hope that we'll be able to adjust it to include uh, a, something that is more uh, like it has more feedback from the community. We just needed to test the process first and make sure that we that we knew how to do it well and that the community knew what we were trying to do so they can provide the necessary feedback to make it better. We have uh, Erskine and then Elise. Yes. Okay, I've got a, uh, it's a two part question. The first part is, um, will the same information be presented at the meetings? Uh, yes, unless you guys re recommend that I do it different. I know this was kind of long. Uh, no, 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 no. I thought it was good. Uh, uh, timing was not We bad. may, after, after the steering committee is done, we may make some small adjustments to reflect what the decisions they made. Okay. Okay. And then, then that means that many of these same questions that we're asking will, 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 be, will come up again at those meetings and, and we'll maybe get a better understanding of the uh, some of the responses mm -hmm. the more often we hear them. Yeah, and I, I put that presentation based on the feedback I've been getting as I do this presentation. I try to make it better every time. So I'll probably adjust this one as well based on the feedback the question you guys asked me today. Do you have another right. question? No, I think, I think it was a good presentation uh, all the way around. Okay, Elise. Hey, Quite Fabian. I just hey. wanted to, to clarify because I went to the QR code and I'm on the site. Um, so I wanted to make sure I understood the difference between the budget delegate and the committee facilitator. Could you explain that one more time, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a, com a committee facilitator would be like Jim. He's running the meeting, but he's not making decisions about what you guys decide, right? So there has to be somebody in the meeting that is not influencing the process. It's just making sure that I don't talk for too long or that Phil doesn't talk for too long. It's, it's, it's somebody who's more like a facilitator and not a decision maker. And so a facilitator is very important as you know, because there are some meetings where people will talk and talk and talk and, and they get into arguments or whatever. And that is not necessarily helpful to the process. So having a, mm -hmm. an outside party that helps the meeting along is important. Okay, and that's the community facilitator. And then what's the budget delegate? 
the budget delegate has a has to be a local resident and it's a very cool job because they are the ones that are going to interpret the uh guidelines set up by the steering committee and they're going to go let, let's say uh there is a thousand ideas right so we're going to divide uh i mean the budget delegates are going to divide themselves into maybe five different committees and each one of them will take like two 200 ideas and so they're going to start screening through those ideas and separating the ones that uh, are eligible and the ones that are not and so by the time they're done they're going to and this is divided into three phases the first phase is is a very rough effort to screen what is uh, legit and what is not and so then they go to a, a second phase and then at the end of the third phase you end up with the uh, items that go into the ballot Got it. Thank you, Fabian. And I, I, some of you live in Bordeaux. You may remember that there was a council member that wanted to do a UFO landing site. You may remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That didn't get funded. You do. <laughs> that didn't get funded. It was not an eligible item, although uh, it wasn't illegal uh, to do it, but it just didn't get funded. Well, that's kind of what the budget delegates are going to do. They're going to take these ideas. Uh, somebody may propose, uh, now I know somebody is going to propose a UFO landing site. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but then the budget delegates will have to go through the process and make sure that uh, the best 25 ideas that people propose are the ones that come up for a vote. Not me. I mean, I don't want the city to do it. It has to be done by the locals. Uh, has a question. Is it, I was just wondering, as far as communicating this to, you know, the residents, have you thought about contacting the leaders in the church and getting yes. the disseminated out information to the yep. flyers and everything? Yeah, we've been, those uh, districts? we have some interns in the office that have been contacting uh, people trying to get ahead of uh, yeah. set up a schedule of, of meetings like for example, I already talked to Ms. Ruby and I'm going to go to her neighborhood association. Any of you that want to uh, come and do this while the steering committee is working in the process, I can already do this because I'm not conf in conflict with what they're trying to do. Uh, it's just information at this point. So please in invite us if there is any uh, meetings that you know of. And if there are ideas of people that we should call to schedule things, please let us know. We want to know as, as many opportunities as possible. We want to have the four months of lots of meetings. Fabian, uh, how do we contact you about a meeting we want you to attend? Just uh, email me at pv at nashville.gov. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Gina has a question. Uh, can we talk about the ballot and the voting? And is this a representative that we're talking about? How, uh, no, that's not that. How do we vote, Aaron? How can we help? We are going to use, uh, we don't know yet because the steering committee has not decided, but uh, I, ideally we are going to have a robust uh, system with Hub Nashville that people are going to be able to open and vote. Now the, the question might be, uh, people can only vote once, but they may be able to vote for more than one item. Uh, so that's again, a question for the steering committee. In some cities, they get to vote up to three items. In other cities, they get to vote one item. Uh, I'm curious to see what the steering committee think it might work. Uh, in talking to some of the steering committee members, uh, they indicated that they thought that we should have paper ballots as well. Uh, whatever people vote is going to have to be put on, on the system, on the app system, because we are going to be creating a database of items. So and, okay. and for that, we're going to need, again, volunteers, because I don't want people to say, uh, all this is great, but Fabian changed the database and, and made it his own. So we will need to have uh, local residents involved in the whole process to guarantee that it's transparent and fair. So I can go to Hub National, click, you have a list, I'll click, it will be a link to my email, and that's how it, the vote will be counted? Yes. Uh, Valerie, who's also a resident of North Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really love that you are connected with Hub Nashville. You have a lot of constituents who are not internet savvy. 
and so they need a way to call. Um, but my other point is that I, I feel as though the, these are neighborhood leaders you're talking to, uh, so they need to, um, I think, uh, create some kind of, have a conversation so you don't have a hundred ideas coming from a neighborhood, you know, develop some consensus around what the idea is, and then everybody will vote for the idea. I, I'm not going to go towards what I what I guess is the leader. No, of course not. But I'm yeah. saying they need to figure out, well, you know, yeah. in the neighborhood, kind of what that looks like. Um, kind of like coming to agree. Come to yeah, some yeah. sort of agreement well, no, in well, a way. Well, I, you know, you can have a hundred ideas. Quite, and I'm just encouraging the people to do that because that will be like trying to manipulate the process or something. Uh, but obviously, uh, I. I don't want to influence it one way or another. Let me put it that way. I'm, I, my goal is to get as many ideas as possible from people. And then I trust that the majority of the residents are going to know what's good for them. They're voting, going to vote on the ones that are best. And those are the ones that are going to get funded. Um, I see no other questions. Am I missing anybody? No. Please keep in mind that this is the first pilot program and that there is, there is going to be opportunity to make it better, and I'm hoping that you guys are going to help make it better in the coming years. And so at any time, if you think that I'm doing something wrong, you know where to find me, and I hope that you'll tell me, because I, I, I'm in charge of this thing, and I want to make sure it's as, as good as possible. Excellent. Okay, we're going to go last call once, twice, three times. All right. Claudia, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Again, uh, I put in the chat room for those of you who are virtual here, uh, uh, Fabian's PB address. It is PB, peanut butter, at Nashville.gov uh, for anybody who wants to uh, send them a question. Uh, thank you all for coming out on this uh, hot, hot, hot night. I'm sorry that those of you who are here in person have to go back out into the heat. <laughs> um, for those of you who uh, joined virtually, we are really glad um, that you were able to join us tonight uh, and, and be part of this conversation. So thanks everyone for being here and we'll keep in touch. Okay. Good night. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Fabian. Good night. 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 Good